We're going to look at how to create movement inside your bubble balloon and for this particular design I'm going to use the aqua balloon, the medium sized aqua balloon, the 23 and a half centimetre aqua. But first of all you're going to need to get one of these. It's a little handheld fan but before we do anything at all we want to make sure that this works. So there is a little plastic tab here and you just pull that out uh, and then the little switch at the back and we switch it on, great, it's working. So we can switch that off again and just pop the, the little blades of the fan down. Okay, so that's what you're looking for. Next, you're going to need a 646. I'm using white and I've cut the tip off one of the 646s and I've cut it so that it is very approximately the length of the body of the fan. So you just want to stretch that open and put the bottom of your fan inside. Okay, and then just pull that down around the body of the fan and just pull it up so that it is just below the blades. So you've covered the switch and that 646 just sits at that ridge here. So it just the, the fan tapers ever so slightly here and that's where your 646 ends. Okay, so we've, we've covered it. That's our first layer of covering. And the reason we do this is because this casing of your fan is not airtight. Uh, so we need to cover it. Okay, and we're going to need to put a second layer of uh, covering on here. So I have tied a knot in the uh, end of the uh, bit of uh, 646 there, and I've cut a slightly, slightly longer piece. That might be a little bit too long, um, but just open that up again and pop this inside. Okay, okay, and then just ease this up the body of the fan. Okay, and whilst you're doing this, you need to be careful not to switch the fan on accidentally. So it just takes a little bit of manoeuvring. It's not the easiest thing to do. Just get that over the switch and pull that up. Okay, again, we're going to take this to just to that lip, just above the, the lip there. Okay. So there you go, and this bit's hanging out. That, that, doesn't, that doesn't matter, okay? We've got the, the body covered, and that makes this reasonably airtight. Without putting this covering on, the, the body of this fan is not airtight, and so air will leak out of the balloon through, through the fan. Okay, so that's that bit done, and that's, that's the hardest bit, actually. Okay, next you're going to need some polystyrene beads and for this demonstration I'm using some coloured ones really just to show up the design on camera a little bit better. I quite often use just the, the white polystyrene beads uh, for this design because it creates a nice sort of um, snowfall effect. And you're going to need about uh, two cupfuls. Uh, so if you've got a measuring cup, you're going to need about two cupfuls of beads uh, to put inside your aqua balloon. So take your aqua balloon and you just want to open up the neck and we just do that by just, just rubbing this slightly and just opening up the neck. Okay, so you've got your protective wrapper on here. So keep that on there for the moment. And we just want to open up that neck and you want to just work your fingers in gradually and get your fingers deep inside the balloon and then stretch it out. So if you start, if you haven't got your fingers deep inside the balloon and you start to stretch it out, your fingers will probably go through the, um, through the plastic at the neck. So just gently, you know, put some pressure on the neck and gently pull it out, okay? Right, uh, next you're going to need your hand pump and I'm just going to put a few puffs of air in there just to open it out just very, very slightly, just to really just to sort of part the, uh, the two sides of the balloon. Put your fingers back in, stretch out a little bit more, okay. And 
Okay, I can, I can feel that balloon giving. It's a lot less resistance than there was when I first started to, um, to do this. And then take your castration ring pliers and put those deep inside the balloon, so in the neck. Put those deep inside the neck so that the prongs are protruding into the balloon, okay? And at that point, you can start to open out that neck. Take your beads and as best you can, put them into the balloon. I've tried various ways of doing this and um, I've not yet found the perfect method. I've found different ways of doing it. I experimented quite a bit, um, but these things do pick up the static quite a lot. And yeah, that's just the way they are. This, this just takes a bit of time. Just feed them in. Until you've got as many in there as you want. So if you are troubled by the colour here at the top of the fan, you can always just paint that. Um, once you've sleeved it, I would recommend you doing that. And um, it will just help you with the colour. So if you're doing a design where the pink is a problem for you, you perhaps want it to be white, just paint it white. Um, you can uh, spray paint it, but sometimes that can present a few problems if you get the paint onto the, um, the little fan blades. So you just need to be careful if you're spray painting it. So take your aqua balloon and again, insert your fingers in and really stretch that out, okay? And take your fan and you're going to want to insert the fan so that the plastic is just below the switch here on the fan. So again, fingers in, stretch that out and then just put that inside, okay? So the plastic is above the switch. I can extricate my fingers, <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> Pull them out, okay. And then just tidy up this bit around the neck a little bit. So the plastic will be bunched up somewhat. Just pull it out just slightly. Okay, so that's what we've got. Okay, next take a 160 and I've just trimmed off the end. Uh, and in the way that you would tie off a deco bubble, we're going to use that same technique to tie off our aqua balloon. And what we want to do is we want to locate the, the on off switch. I'm just going to pull this down a little bit further. Okay, stretch that out because we don't need it all bunched up like that. And we're going to wrap below. So we're going to wrap below the switch, uh, but above this ridge, this lip here. Okay, so you just want to position your 160 there and wrap round and go over the top of the 160. Okay, go one way and then tie that off tie twice okay and then just go in the other direction going over the top of the 160 okay pretty much until you're out of balloon and then tie off again Okay, so that's, that's your fan secured inside your aqua balloon. Okay. Next, we're going to inflate our aqua balloon uh, and we're not gonna be able to do it through the neck for obvious reasons. So what we need to do is create a little hole along the seam of our aqua balloon so that we can insert our hand pump. So it does need to be just a very, very small hole. And the positioning of that hole will very much depend on the design that you're making. So if I'm not going to put anything on top of this design, uh, if I just want it to be very uh, simple, then I tend to locate my hole just off to one side um, because frankly, once 
the piece is done, people are less likely to notice it just off to one side than if it's uh, right on the top. Um, but if you're going to add lots of things uh, to it, to the top, um, then it might not be so uh, critical as to, to where you position that. You might want to put it at the top. But it's your choice and it very much depends on how you're going to um, use this technique within your design. Okay, so what we want to do is just find where we want to position the hole and just part the plastic a little bit. So just remove the pl protective plastic wrapping a, a little bit from that side. I want my little hole to be there. And then with my scissors, I'm just going to cut a very small hole. So that, that is just a very, very small cut in the plastic. Um, I may need to cut it some more, um, but it's better to start small and then cut it a bit more than to cut a hole that's too big. So just insert your pump into the hole. Then take a little scrap of 160. and use that to just wrap around the pump and the bit of plastic. Okay, in the same way we would a deco bubble or the attaching the um, so we're doing this in the same way we would a deco bubble Okay, and that's just going to make it easier um, to inflate. So hang on to it as well, because you will get some resistance and inflate. So we won't be able to inflate this aqua bubble to anything like its normal size, but you're looking for something that is reasonably round and balanced. So what you're looking for is the left-right balance to be as it should be. So look at the scene. And this is a judgment call. Um, I can't tell you exactly what size to inflate to. Uh, it's very much a judgment call. Okay, okay, so I've pulled out the hand pump and as I've done that, I've grasped that little bit of plastic and I'm twisting it. Okay. Take another bit of uh, 160. Hold on to this and again, as you would, a deco bubble, tie that off. few times okay once you've tied once tie a second time okay and then we can just trim off that end and we can trim off the top of this little piece of plastic so just trim that off and tidy that up as best you can so there you have the beads within your bubble and you just need to locate that switch and turn on your fan <laughs> Next, you're going to need one of these and I think we've all got an absolute ton of these uh, lying around our studios wondering what on earth to do with them. So it's the uplighter for the knot stand and we're going to use this to help us create a base. And then all you need to do is take your aqua balloon, take your knot stand base and just slip that inside 
and then just use the end here to tie on to a weight of some description. Okay, let's tie that on. Okay, and here you have exactly the same thing uh, but using the white beads and I put about two cupfuls in here. So again, switch it on. So a very different sort of effect. So I think this creates a really magical, I think you'll agree this creates a really magical effect and you don't need to do a lot more of this kind of snow globe effect. It, people find really quite mesmerizing and they, they don't really know how you've done it. So um, there you go. And another reason for keeping the base of this design very simple is because it's not a design that you're going to be able to walk away from and just uh, leave. You know, you're not going to be able to set up this two hours before, walk away and leave. This needs to be switched on really at the start of the event. So if you've got a very simple base like this, you can just show your client how to switch it on and they just need to scoot around or someone needs to scoot around um, the tables. Uh, just before the event starts and switch everything on. Okay, and then you're good to go.